I bet you didn't know that there are three animals that we've started on our homestead that we never want back here again. So two summers ago, I decided that it was going to be a great idea to get a bunch of geese, bring them onto the homestead, and have them as guard animals for all of our other animals. Today I wanted to show you a, a quick video of the newest addition to our homestead. Uh, some very ferocious guard animals that we bought. These attack geese. The plan was to uh, get about 10, I think we ended up with 12, but I think we wanted 10. We were going to raise them all together and then we were going to separate them into groups. We were going to put two with our goats, two with the pigs, uh, two with the male goats. Uh, and we'll we get in the orchard. Yeah, and put some scare away oh, yeah. like the deer. And yeah, that kind and put of some thing. in the orchard, and so that was the plan. We were going to raise all of these geese, and then we were going to put them all in their uh, places on the homestead. And I had it all planned out. It was going to be the perfect plan, uh, except it was like a disaster from the very beginning. Uh, let's take a little walk and see how big they're getting. Uh, they were they were fine when they were like this big, but as soon as they started to get big enough to get out uh, from out like from in their brooder, uh, they just they weren't at all what I expected them to be. They were extremely noisy, uh, extremely messy, like messier than it was like having like the corners cross around all the time. Here's I mean, the thing, okay, let me tell you the deal. Kevin was so excited to have these baby goslings and they were so cute and he would go out to the brooder and he would snuggle with them. They thought he was their mama. So after it was time for them to come out of the brooder, all they ever wanted to do was to be by Kevin. Right. So they lived like near the front door of the house. Right. They would just wait outside the door for me to come out and they didn't want to go anywhere else. I. I taught them where the pond was. We actually uh, mowed a trail so we could show them how to get down to the pond. Um, but unless we physically would chase them down to the pond, they just wanted to stay at the front door. So front door geese uh, were a bit messy because we had 10 large full-size geese pooping right outside the front door. Right. It was quite a mess. So then we tried to separate them and put them like we had planned in all the different areas. And uh, first of all, our goats and and the geese did not get along they at hated all. They each other. They both just tried to attack each other all day long. <laughs> um, not to mention that any source of water that we had for the goats, uh, the geese were trying to swim in, which means they were pooping in it and everything else. And when you're trying to milk your goats and keep them fairly clean, uh, having them, you know, infested with geese poop all the time is just not not a good thing. No, and really the final straw was that they really became aggressive. Uh, not only to us, but to people that stopped by, and it was getting kind of scary. Uh, we ended up selling them all. I think we ended up even giving a couple away. We did. And so, um, hey, the people who, who got them from them, uh, some of them ended up feeling the same way we did, uh, but some of them actually loved them. So, uh, you know, every homestead is a little bit different, but our experience with geese, we do not want geese back on our homestead anytime in the future. No way. The next animal that we will never have on our homestead again is actually probably going to be the most controversial animal because most homesteads have this animal, but not for us. And that is cats. We moved here and thought, hey, we need cats. Every homestead needs barn cats. So we contacted some friends and we got three kittens uh, to bring onto the homestead to be mousers. Yeah, uh, but similar to the geese, I think we made really the same kind of problem. And that is that uh, we tamed them. And because we tamed them, they no longer wanted to act like barn cats who just kind of, you know, stayed away from us and did their job. Um, just like the geese, they wanted to be right up by the house 
all the time. And not just like right up by the house, but like right at the front door step. So every time you open the door, they would dart in the house. And let me tell you something. We never let these cats in the house. No, they, never. Never. But that was where they thought they needed to be. And they would go so far as when we had the kitchen windows open during dinner, they would jump up on the screens and like cling on the screens right. and try to come in the house. Right. And they were actually trying to get on the school bus they with were. the kids in the morning. They were. I would have to go out in the morning and feed them specifically right when the bus came. Otherwise, they would follow the kids out to the bus stop and try to board the school bus with the kids. Yeah. And, and th there were just so many problems with the cats. But uh, one of the big things for me was when we were processing animals, when we were butchering chickens, or, you know, I like to go fishing, so when I was cleaning fish... I mean, the, the cats were just, they were on your tables. They were, I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. When you tried to grill anything outside, they were, they were trying to get in the grill to get food. They were crazy. They were even trying to jump at flames in the bonfire. One actually almost jumped in the bonfire. Uh, oh, and then what really put it over the edge for us, though, um, was that they were starting to use our raised bed gardens as litter boxes. And because we sell stuff at the farmer's market... Well, and we well, eat it well, ourselves. I would say, yeah, it's gross enough, but, but you know, it's a liability to be selling food, even really eating food, um, that was grown basically in a cat litter box. Ugh. So, uh, just like the geese, after not very long, I mean, after we tried a few things to stop that behavior, um, they had to go. It because, was time to give them away. Yeah, we cannot have cats pooping on our food. So uh, the cats, just like the geese, we don't want cats on our homestead anymore. So the last animal that really we don't want on the homestead anymore, but unfortunately we still have, is the guineas. Uh, this last summer uh, we decided to get some guineas because as many of you know here in southern Missouri, we have a huge tick problem and guineas are supposed to be one of the best things you can get for your homestead to help with ticks. There were kind of two problems initially with the guineas. The first problem was that when we fed them at the homestead they always stayed at the homestead and they wouldn't go out and look for bugs and things to eat because they were getting a free meal right. from the homestead. Right. There was no motivation to forage. Right. But when we stopped feeding them all together, they did go out and look for bugs and forage, but it was on everybody else's property except for ours. Yeah, they would pretty much get up in the morning and head across the road to our neighbor's field, and they would spend the entire day over in our neighbor's yard, or not yard, but over in their pasture and in their woods, um, apparently eating all the neighbor's ticks. <laughs> Uh, but not doing anything to help with ours. I don't think they have any ticks over there anymore. No. But the other thing with the guineas was that they are just disappearing. And they're not disappearing overnight. If, if they were disappearing overnight, we'd build a barn for them or something like that. But they're just disappearing in the middle of the day. And I'm not sure how to control that problem if we put them in a pen... Uh, that was covered or whatever to keep them in to protect them from predators, then they do no good uh, trying to, to, you know, eat the ticks. Uh, right. So it's really a double-edged sword of, of what you do. Do you protect the guineas, but then there's no point in having them, or right. do you let them free range, but they're all going to disappear? But let's also talk about what everybody warned us about, which is absolutely true. The guineas are loud, and they don't ever stop. These guineas. You guys hear that in the background? Those are our guineas. I'm pretty sure that's the first thing Sarah's gonna hunt once she learns how to be a good shot. She, they're not really bothering me that much, but Sarah's already <laughs> ready to put them in the freezer. <laughs> and they haven't even had time to make a dent in our tick population. Every so. day I count them and every day there's still nine. Yeah, but I'm, we're gonna keep them. We're gonna keep them. Maybe, if she lets me. No, they go on and on and on. And on and on and on. Uh, 
<laughs> Which isn't bad now that we're down to just two of them because eight of them have gotten eaten by something or whatever. But when there were 10 or 12 of them out there, I don't remember what we started with. I think we started with 10. Started with 10. So when there were 10 of them out there and they were just all making noise all day long, uh, it was... I think I went insane. Yeah. And it makes it hard when you're trying to record videos for YouTube every for sure. day. Sometimes we would have to wait like 20 or 30 minutes for the guineas to be quiet enough for us to even start a video. Right. It was pretty insane. So if you are a homestead who's going to think about YouTube videos, don't get guineas because it makes your life a lot harder. So we do have two guineas left, so we'll see how long that lasts. Right. I do feel like the guineas could have some potential. Um, if there was just a way to keep them on our on our property, uh, but I've yet to figure out a way to do that, short of maybe putting them on a leash. <laughs> but I don't think guinea leashes are a good thing. How is that better than a <laughs> guinea tractor? I don't we know. We give them a really long leash. Oh boy. <laughs> so those are three animals that we had high expectations for that we have completely changed our minds about. Have you guys had any animals on your place that? Uh, you have similar experience with that you thought these are going to be great and then after you got them you were just can't wait to get rid of them uh, let us know in the comments below we'd love to hear from you maybe you'll save other people for making mistakes too maybe you'll save us for making more mistakes right so you guys i hope you had fun with this video today we sure did uh, if you're enjoying this video and enjoying our channel right now is a perfect time to hit the subscribe button below don't forget to check us out on social media including instagram and until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.